Not even the safety of your own home can save you from the fierce claws of the world's biggest and scariest predators. However, what would you do if you lived in a remote area and a bear lurked around your home? Well, today I'm going to tell you what Patrice Miller did and how it cost her her life. Hit like and subscribe. This is Fierce. In the small mountainous town of Downeyville, California, tucked into the Sierra Nevada mountains, people either live in cluster neighborhoods or far, far away from any neighbor at all in the heart of the mountains. Patrice Miller, a 71-year-old woman, had made this town her home for many decades. Downeyville has a population of around 290 people, so you can imagine everybody knows everybody, no matter how remote your house is. This is why when Patrice's neighbors hadn't seen her in a while, they became suspicious. The woman would rarely leave her home, that's true, but she would never miss her weekly grocery run or her walk around the town square. So, in a welfare check requested by her neighbors, sheriff deputies made a horrifying discovery. The porch was stained with bear scat and the mosquito screen was open, leading the way toward the unlocked front door. Patrice would often feed her cats on the porch, and there were a few piles of trash here and there, which might have attracted a bear. In fact, this wouldn't have been her first bear encounter on her property. Bears looked for food anywhere they could, and for them, Patrice's home was a gold mine. She had cat food scattered around the porch, fruit trees in her yard, and trash piles laying around where you least expected them. Yes, she wasn't the tidiest of women, but she really wasn't a fan of bears either. So a few years ago, when a bear wanted to enter her home, she fiercely punched it and chased it away. This time, however, Patrice didn't stand a chance against the beast. November temperatures can go as low as below freezing in the Sierra Nevada mountains, which can drive a lot of people inside rather than outside, despite the beautiful scenery. On a chill November night, Patrice was one of these people, relaxing at home next to the fire. Amidst the crackling of the firewood in her favorite TV show, a 71-year-old woman heard some kind of commotion right outside. She first thought it was a chatty neighbor, so she ignored the noise, wishing the person would go away. But the noise grew louder and louder and louder until she couldn't lay in her armchair anymore. She got up and started to investigate. The porch was clear. There wasn't anything there that could make a sound, no matter how strong the wind was. So then she moved into the backyard when it dawned on her that it might be the trash cans. Not a lot of time had passed since the last bear made its way onto her property to rummage for some food. And with the sudden low temperatures, any remaining bears roaming around the mountains would eventually come into the neighborhood to feed on whatever was available before entering hibernation. As Patrice reached the door that led to the backyard, she saw it, a big male black bear searching chaotically through her trash. Within a few seconds, her instinct kicked in. She simply couldn't let the bear get away with it. Patrice opened the back door and started hitting her pot and occasionally clapping her hands in order to scare the bear away. For some time, the beast wasn't at all bothered by the sounds, continuing to munch on old food found in the trash. But when Patrice found a rock and threw it at the animal, rage filled the bear's throat and it let out a frightening growl, one Patrice had never heard before. Suddenly, all her confidence and bravery left her thin old body. The bear started running toward the woman with incredible speed. Patrice ran back inside the house, closing the door just as the bear was about to grab her right shoulder. After a few seconds of staring at the bear's angry eyes, Patrice understood that she needed the barricade herself. She quickly walked toward the front door to make sure it was locked, but the bear had the same idea. Before she could reach the door, the bear tore open the mosquito screen and pushed through the front door. With a swift move, the bear lunged at the woman, pinning her to the floor on her stomach. Its sharp teeth tore into her left leg, revealing blood and flesh. She tried to move the bear off of her, but the reality of the situation hit her. She was still a 71-year-old woman, and that was still a huge black bear, probably weighing around 400 pounds. Her efforts were in vain. 
The bear's growls and huffs filled Patrice's body with terror. The animal had her still pinned down, mauling on her leg. Suddenly, the woman saw a spray can relatively close to her. She managed to reach it, and with every ounce of strength in her body, she aimed it at the bear's eyes and sprayed away. The beast got up, let out a deafening growl, and took a few steps back, confused and in pain. When it regained its balance, the beast's rage was even bigger than before. The black bear's claws reached Patrice just as she was about to get up. The bear grabbed the frail woman, raised her to the ceiling, and threw her on the floor before jumping on her body. Its claws dug into her torso, ripping apart almost every inch of her. Powerful teeth bit Patrice's arms while she lay there, hoping someone would hear her. Unfortunately, no one did. A few days after the attack, when her neighbors grew suspicious as no one had seen her in a while, sheriff deputies were dispatched to her home to do a welfare check. As they approached her secluded home, they were met with the unmistakable signs of a bear's presence, a broken door and fresh scat on the porch. Inside, the scene was grim. Miller's struggle for survival obviously lasted only a few moments before the bear's powerful bites and swipes caused fatal injuries. After the attack, the bear lingered around the property, feeding on the remains. Sheriff Mike Fisher, who spoke to the media, described the scene as one of chaos and violence. It appeared that the bear had probably been there for several days and had been feeding on the remains, he said, emphasizing the terrifying nature of the attack. Patrice's body was unrecognizable, with bites and claw marks all over her legs, torso, arms, and neck. When asked if anyone noticed the attack, her neighbors denied hearing anything out of the ordinary. No screams, no sounds of struggle, nothing. The deputy's initial theory was that the bear fed on the 71-year-old's body after she died. However, DNA testing in an autopsy revealed that Patrice died because of the bear attack. Authorities analyzed the bear's behavior and habits, noting that it had been feeding on Miller's property for days. The bear's boldness, as evidenced by its repeated visits, indicated that it had lost its fear of humans. Patrice Miller's last moments were filled with terror and struggle, but also with bravery. She tried to stand up against a beast, a massive black bear that invaded her home. Even though she didn't succeed, she would be remembered as a woman who knew how to stand up for herself and her community.